Congratulations on the purchase of your new tenant floor scrubber. With proper use and care, your machine's highly efficient cleaning systems will perform well for many years to come. This operator training video will help you better understand how to prepare your machine for use, scrub your floors, and care for your machine so you get the longest life and best performance from your floor scrubber. Safety. It is the operator's responsibility to operate the machine safely. There are safety labels on your machine to indicate important information you need to be aware of when operating the machine. ECH2O is a technology that electrically converts plain tap water into a powerful cleaner without chemicals. If your machine is equipped with the ECH2O technology, you will see the ECH2O logo on the side of the machine. To use the ECH2O technology, first fill the water tank with clean water. Then, press the ECH2O switch to enable the technology. If you are using the ECH2O technology, the flow rate is automatically controlled by the system. Next, lower the scrub head, lower the squeegee, and pull the control handle bale backward to begin scrubbing. While scrubbing, observe the ECH2O light on the control panel. If you see a solid green light, the ECH2O technology is functioning properly. If the ECH2O light is flashing red, or is solid red, refer to the operator's manual for more information and follow your company's service procedure guidelines. How the scrubbing systems work. Your machine is designed to effectively clean dirty floors in a single pass. Pressing down on the scrub head lift pedal, then moving it to the left and raising it, will lower the scrub head to the working position. Lowering the squeegee handle will lower the squeegee to the working position and turn on the vacuum fan. As the machine travels forward, the desired amount of cleaning solution is distributed to the floor. Brushes or pads use the cleaning solution to scrub the floor clean. When traveling forward, the squeegee wipes the dirty solution from the floor. The scrub vacuum fan then draws the dirty solution collected by the squeegee and deposits it into the recovery tank. Controls and instrumentation. The key switch is used to turn the machine's power on and off. The squeegee assembly is lowered to the working position by lowering the squeegee control lever on the rear of the machine. The vacuum fan will automatically turn on when the lever is lowered. To raise the squeegee and turn off the vacuum fan, raise the lever to the up and locked position. Brush pressure is adjusted by either raising or lowering the down pressure lever on the right side of the operator's control panel. The solution flow rate can be adjusted by turning the solution flow control knob on the lower right rear of the machine. Turn the knob clockwise to decrease flow and counterclockwise to increase flow. It is best to set the solution flow rates to the lowest settings that provide the cleaning results you expect. Forward propelling is activated by pulling the control handle bale backward. To control the propelling speed, adjust the speed control knob. Reverse propelling is activated by pushing the control handle bale forward. Note, always raise the squeegee when propelling the machine in reverse. The battery charge level indicators show the amount of charge remaining in the batteries. When the batteries are fully charged, all indicator lights are lit. As the batteries discharge, the lights turn off from right to left. When the discharge level reaches the first red light, stop scrubbing, drive the machine to the charging area, and recharge the batteries. To protect the batteries from total discharge, the scrubbing function will automatically shut off when the red light begins to blink. However, you will still be able to drive the machine to the charging area. The hour meter records the number of total hours the machine has been operating. You can use the hour meter reading to determine when to perform recommended maintenance procedures. There are resettable circuit breakers which protect the machine from an electrical overload. If a circuit breaker should trip, allow the system to cool and then manually reset the circuit breaker by pushing in on the button. If the circuit breaker trips again or cannot be reset, Follow your company's service procedure guidelines to have the system inspected and repaired. Brush Information 
For best cleaning results, use the appropriate brushes or pads for your cleaning application. Brush and pad application guidance is located in the operator's manual. Part numbers are located in the parts manual. To remove or install disc brushes or pads, first raise the scrub head off the floor and turn off the key. To remove the pad driver or brush from the machine, push the plunger downward to lock the driver. Then turn the brush clockwise to release it. When using pads, Attach the pad to the pad driver and secure the pad with the center lock before installing the driver on the machine. To install the pad driver or brush on the machine, push the plunger downward to lock the motor hub, align the brush with the motor hub, raise it up, and turn it counterclockwise to secure it. To change brushes on a machine with a two-brush scrub head, from the operator's viewpoint, turn the right brush counterclockwise to release it from the motor drive hub and clockwise to lock it into place. The left brush should be turned clockwise to release it and counterclockwise to lock it into place. Replacing or rotating squeegee blades. For best scrubbing solution recovery, the squeegee blades need to be in good condition. When the blades become worn, simply rotate them end for end or top to bottom to use a new wiping edge. Replace the squeegee blades when all the edges are worn. To replace or rotate the squeegee blades, first remove the squeegee assembly from the machine by removing the vacuum hose and loosening the retainer knobs. To change or rotate the front blade, loosen all four knobs Next, loosen the band clamp and remove the band from the squeegee assembly. Replace or rotate the front blade to a new wiping edge. With the blade installed, secure the outer two knobs. You can also replace or rotate the rear blade and then install and secure the band. Finally, install the squeegee frame on the machine, secure all four knobs, and connect the vacuum hose. Before operating your machine, check the squeegee blades for wear and proper adjustment. Check the brushes or pads for wear. Check the scrub head skirt for wear. Confirm the recovery tank vacuum shutoff float screen is clean and installed. Check the battery meter and charge the batteries if needed. Fill the solution tank with clean water. If detergent is to be used, add the recommended amount of cleaning detergent. Note. Machine damage due to improper detergent usage will void the manufacturer's warranty. Warning! Fire or explosion hazard. Never use or pick up flammable liquids or reactive metals. Scrubbing with your machine. Pick up any large debris, plastic wrap, or string that may become wrapped around the brushes and sweep the area before scrubbing to help prevent streaking or damage to your machine. Turn the key to the on position. Press down on the scrub head lift pedal. Move it to the left and raise it to lower the scrub head to the working position. 
Lower the squeegee assembly to the floor by lowering the squeegee lift lever. Pull backward on the control handle bale and begin scrubbing. Note, a slow walking speed and scrub path with a 2 inch or 5 centimeter overlap will provide the best cleaning results. If you are using conventional scrubbing methods, you can adjust the solution flow control knob to the desired flow rate. Attention! Do not operate the machine on inclines that exceed 5% or 3 degrees. Caution! If excessive foam appears in the recovery tank due to too much or the wrong kind of detergent, vacuum motor damage can result. To prevent vacuum motor damage, pour a foam control solution into the recovery tank. To reverse the machine, simply raise the squeegee and push the control handle bale forward. To stop scrubbing, release the control handle bale, raise the squeegee, raise the scrub head, and turn the key to the off position. Draining and cleaning your machine. After each use, the tank should be drained and cleaned. Transport the machine to the disposal area and turn the key switch off. To drain and clean the recovery tank, Hold the drain hose upward, remove the cap, and lower the hose to the drain. Next, remove the recovery tank cover, rinse out the tank, then clean the vacuum shutoff float screen. And the debris tray, both located inside the tank. If needed, drain the remaining water from the solution tank by pulling the solution tank level hose off the hose fitting and lowering it to the drain. Charging the batteries. To prolong the life of the batteries, recharge them only if the machine was used for a total of 30 minutes or more. Do not leave batteries discharged for lengthy periods. To charge the batteries, first transport the machine to a well ventilated area. Park the machine on a flat, dry surface. Turn the key off and set the parking brake if it is equipped with one. Some batteries are sealed and do not require any maintenance. On this type of battery, the cap should not be removed. If you are charging wet batteries, lead acid batteries, the fluid level should be checked before charging the batteries. The fluid should be at the level shown. If the battery fluid level is too low, damage to the battery will result. If the battery fluid level is too high, the fluid may overflow while charging. Warning! Fire or explosion hazard. Batteries emit hydrogen gas. Keep sparks and open flame away. Before charging, prop up the recovery tank for ventilation. If your machine is equipped with an offboard charger, you will need to connect the charger's DC cord to the machine's battery receptacle. If your machine is equipped with either the onboard or offboard charger, the next step is to plug the charger's AC power cord into a properly grounded receptacle. The supplied charger will automatically begin charging and shut off when fully charged. Attention! Do not disconnect the charger's DC cord from the machine's receptacle when the charger is operating, because arcing may result. If the charger must be interrupted during charging, Disconnect the AC power cord first. Performing the daily operational checks, making needed adjustments, and following the proper operating procedures for your tenant floor scrubber will ensure that it will perform in top condition throughout its useful lifetime. You will find it cleans better, has fewer maintenance issues, and effectively enhances the environment.